Eugene Cernan, an astronaut for Apollo 17, was the last person to arrive on the moon in 1972. What this means is that it's been 50 years since the last human-led moon exploration happened, and you only have to look around you to notice how much has changed in all that time. So it was really only a matter of time before humanity decided to once again head for the moon, taking advantage of and further improving on evolving technology. NASA's Artemis program is the result of this decision, and it aims to conduct the most extensive exploration of the moon's surface that humans have ever done. Many of the Artemis program's components, including the Orion spacecraft, were developed during the Constellation program, a spaceflight program developed by NASA from 2005 to 2009. But Artemis wasn't formally established until 2017 during the Trump administration. NASA has outlined its objectives for Artemis, and it comes as absolutely no surprise that one of its objectives is to expand knowledge on what the moon is about. The objectives also include improving existing technology, discovering resources on the moon and in space, and expanding long-term presence, considering that humans have only been able to stay on the moon for a couple of days so far. NASA also planned to make this space exploration a partnership thing. Yes, they want to establish that the U.S. is a leader in space exploration, but they have also mentioned that they are open to partnering with other countries and also with private companies. In fact, it has been established that NASA has partnered with private companies including SpaceX and Boeing for the Artemis program. And all the parties have signed the Artemis Accords, alongside a number of other contracts. The accords and other contracts have also been signed by 21 other countries aside from the US including space exploration regulars like Canada, Japan, and the UK, and newbies like Brazil, South Korea, and the UAE. But one of the major objectives of this space exploration is to establish and encourage equality. And to do this, NASA will be sending the first woman and person of color to the moon. The Artemis program is composed of three missions, Artemis 1, Artemis 2, and Artemis 3. Artemis 1 is a test flight that will circle and flies past the moon without a crew. Artemis 2 will have a crew and will go beyond the moon, reaching farther than humans have ever gone in space, and Artemis 3 will be carrying the first female astronaut and the first astronaut of color to the moon where they will be spending a week conducting scientific research. The Artemis program was originally called Exploration Mission, but the name was changed to Artemis as a nod to the last space exploration, Apollo. And the connection there is that according to Greek mythology, Apollo is the twin to the goddess of the moon, Artemis. There are four components that are important to make this Artemis program a reality. The Orion spacecraft, the lunar gateway, the moon landing module, and the space launch system, SLS. The Orion spacecraft is the actual vehicle that will be transporting the astronauts, their stuff, and all the space exploration and experiment equipment to the Gateway and eventually from the Gateway back to Earth. It is designed to carry four people. The Lunar Gateway is a small flexible space station that is currently orbiting the Moon. This is where the astronauts will transfer from the Orion module to the Moon landing module and the plan is that scientific research will continue there even when humans are not on it. The moon landing module is basically a couple of moon landing vehicles that will carry the astronauts and some cargo from the lunar gateway right on to the moon surface. The mechanics for this have been improved on since the last moon landing. So where the Apollo lunar module could only do one return journey, the Artemis lunar module has been designed to be able to do multiple return journeys. And lastly, the Space Launch System, SLS, is the actual launcher that will be used to, well, launch the Orion from Earth. The SLS is, undeniably, the most powerful rocket ever built. I mean, it is 15% more powerful than the Saturn V rocket used in the Apollo missions, and that one was quite powerful. The journey to the moon has already begun as Artemis 1 was successfully launched on November 16 at 047 AM Eastern Standard Time, 647 Greenwich Mean Time from Launch Complex 39B at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. This is great because it failed to launch four times before due to problems with the engines and some tropical storms. Anyway, as was mentioned earlier, this is a test flight, 
So NASA will be using this opportunity to test the Orion module, the SLS rocket, and also the ground systems at the Kennedy Space Center. Everything about the Artemis 1 voyage is being filmed. So if you want to see how the actual launch happened, you can head on over to NASA's YouTube channel when you're done with this video to watch the takeover. You can also track the progress of the space exploration on the NASA's website, and there is a bit to watch seeing as it's been more than two weeks since the takeoff. The plan is for the module to splash down in the Pacific Ocean, not far from California on December 11 after a 25.5-day mission. So far, Artemis 1 has managed to enter the moon's sphere of influence, which happened on day 5, and also break the record for the farthest distance traveled by a spacecraft designed to carry humans into space and safely return them to Earth. Apparently, this record was previously held by the Apollo 13 spacecraft, but with all the advancements in technology that have been made since then, it's really not that surprising that Artemis 1 was able to break the record on day 11. Now, considering that Artemis 1 is unmanned, you might be wondering what then is in that rocket. Well, the rocket carries some experiments which will be carried out in deep space in order to expand knowledge of the moon and space and also improve space exploration technology. The SLS also carries three mannequins equipped with sensors and wears the first-generation Orion Crew Survival System spacesuit, which the actual astronauts will be wearing. This way, NASA scientists can get an idea of what it would be like for the actual astronauts to be in the rocket and what their experiences might be in order to adequately prepare for them. Artemis II will be a four-person crew flight that will complete a lunar flyby and then returns to Earth. The mission is set to be launched sometime in May 2024 and should last for between 8 and 10 days. For Artemis II, the Orion spacecraft will be launched into an orbit around the Earth that will last for around 42 hours. The crew will use the spent Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage ICPS, as a target to demonstrate in-space engagement and proximity operations while also performing numerous checkouts of the spacecraft's life support systems. But right now, the major draw of Artemis III is that it will be the first to take a woman and a person of color to the moon. The two astronauts will be on the moon for about a week, conducting a number of experiments. But four people will actually leave the Earth's atmosphere. The two who won't be landing on the moon will remain aboard the Orion Multipurpose Crew Vehicle MPCV, while the woman and person of color will go on to the moon's surface aboard the human landing system. Before these guys leave the Earth's atmosphere, though, additional gear, including an unpressurized rover that can be controlled remotely, which the astronauts will use on their lunar outings, will be positioned on the moon's surface. Artemis III is the last mission that will be launched using SLS Block 1, and it is set to be launched sometime in 2025. After that, all space launch systems and Artemis missions, starting with Artemis IV and continuing through to a possible Artemis IX, will be launched from its SLS Block 1B, which has a larger exploration upper stage and a cargo compartment to carry additional payloads. Speaking of which, actual plans have only been fleshed out for Artemis 1 to 3, but NASA definitely has plans for more Artemis missions, especially considering that they have already awarded contracts for booster rockets up to Artemis 13. And who knows, maybe one of the later Artemis launches would be taking humans past the moon and onto Mars. In fact, this is something that NASA is actually considering, which is probably why it partnered with SpaceX for this program. Granted, the journey to Mars would be a lot more complicated and put a lot of pressure on existing resources, considering that Mars is farther than the Moon and we don't know as much about it. But the different Artemis space explorations that will be happening in the next couple of years might be exactly what is needed to gather all the information needed and develop the technology enough to finally land the first human on Mars. The timeline for the Mars landing is still kinda blurry though. It seems to be that the long-term goal is to not only send humans to Mars, but also see if the creation of a human settlement on Mars is possible. However, considering that it's been 50 years since the last moon landing, who knows how long we'll have to wait for a Mars landing. I want to know what you think about all of this, so please share your thoughts in the comments section below. And while you're at it, consider hitting like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like this. 
also hit the notification bell so that you know when I post a new video, and I'll see you in the next one.